Welcome back to the Always Reading Book Club. It is your girl Kiki Reader and we are going to do a one and done today by Lissa K and it is called The Bromance Book Club. We meet Gavin Scott and he is in a hotel room kind of like a rinky dink one and some of his teammates have come over to kind of pull him out of his stupor. So he's been married for three years to a woman named Thea. They have a set of twin daughters and his wife has told him that she wants a divorce. He hasn't been treating her nicely the last um, few months because he found out that she has been faking it their whole relationship. And so he started treating her like shit. He started giving her the silent treatment. He moved into the guest room, completely went cold to her, which after a month of that, she was like, you know what? Screw this. Um, if this is how it's going to be, you can get out. You can leave. We can just get a divorce. So his teammates have come over. Um, he winds up throwing up and stuff because he got super drunk on uh, <laughs> whiskey. I think it was whiskey. And um, he won't tell them a part about, you know, her saying, you know, that he's never made her come. He won't tell them that part. <laughs> um, we do find out that they married pretty quickly. Um, so they were together like three months. She got pregnant. And then the next month they got married. So they fully didn't really get to know each other. Um, all those little quirks, all those little things that you take your time to kind of get to do, they didn't do them. Now, I'm not saying that that's because, you know, and that means your relationship's not going to work. I don't mean that. You have people that have known each other, you know, uh, for been in relationships for 10 years. They get married and then they divorce. You have people that have known each other for a week, get married, and they stay, stay married. So, you know, it's all according. It's, it's about the, the, the people involved. But for them, this seems to be an issue. And so um, his, you know, guy, you know, friends asked him because he is on a baseball team called the Nashville Legends. And they asked him, like, well, did you cheat? And he was like, no, I'd never do nothing like that, you know. And they were like, OK, because we don't help cheaters. And he's like, we what are you talking about? And they were like, meet us tomorrow. We'll tell you everything. This is going to help you get your wife back. Um, also, we find out, I forgot, he got called up to the majors. So he used to be in the minor leagues when he met her. And then not too long after they got together, he got called up to the major leagues. Um, I think it's when she had the babies is when he got called up. And he makes like $12 million, million a year. But he's choosing to like... It's kind of like self, it is self-punishment, him staying in this rinky-dink um, motel room. Um, and the guys also told him, do not go and talk to your wife. We then switch to Thea Scott, um, Gavin's wife. And I love it. You always know I love when we uh, switch POVs. It just makes me so happy. So anyway, we find out there were other issues in their marriage besides the fact that she was faking her orgasms. Um, she's an artist and she put all that stuff on hold when she got with Gavin because everything really came about his career. And then she had the children, you know, she had those really quickly. So her life was about him and the kids. Um, we find out that she's a part of WAGS. What is it? Wives? What is it? Wives and girlfriends and something, something like that. She's a part of that for the Nashville Legends, um, but she's never felt like she belonged to them. But slowly and surely, she started to dress like them, very Lily Pulitzer, very Palm Beaches. She started to morph into that, and she doesn't feel like herself. She is, you know, what is it, Depeche Mode t-shirts, rocker t-shirts, you know, bohemian that's her vibe and she's fully neglected that to kind of become something else so she's decided to go to the hardware store 
and she has bought a sledgehammer because there is this wall in the house that screws up the natural light and she has decided she's going to tear it down. So her sister Liv has um, come, she lives there and helps her with the kids and stuff like that. She sees her banging on the wall and she of course is like, well, let me get in on that action. So she starts in the wall. Then she gets one of his bats, the one that he won the championship with, and starts beating the wall with that. And Ava says that um, something about um, mommy, you know, had been crying the night before. So she didn't realize that the kids heard her because she was in the bathtub. She had covered her mouth, but Ava apparently was up and she still heard her. Um, and that's the whole thing. You think children don't know stuff that's going on, even though these kids are like three, but kids are not dumb by <laughs> any means. So Thea and Liv are talking back and forth and she says about the baseball bat. Um, she says, yeah, he loves his bat, um, more than he, you know, ever loved me. Gavin walks up, hears her and says, that's not true. Gavin looks horrible. Dude has had a bad night of drinking. It's not like he's been uh, sleeping well anyway. He's got bags under his eyes. Um, he takes the kids for a walk with the dogs. Uh, I'm sorry, Liv takes the kids for a walk with the dog so that um, Gavin and uh, Thea can talk. Um, he lets her know he wants to fight for them. He doesn't want this to end. And um, Thea's like... She just wants to keep the house. The kids know this house. This is all they know. And um, it'll be better for him. And he's just, you know, kind of like we find out she comes from a broken home. He comes from a place where the, um, his parents' marriage, he says perfect. So you already know right there, that's some bullshit. <laughs> Because no marriage is perfect, you know. It's about what people allow you to see, right? So he didn't see dysfunction the way that Thea saw it when she grew up. Um, she loves Gavin, but she feels like this has got to be done. He doesn't want to accept it. Uh, Gavin stutters. Um, and when he heard Amelia say something with a lisp, he got kind of scared. Um and she was like, it's, you know, it's just a lisp. It's nothing more. Calm down. But it's like, I mean, you already know it's a possibility if you procreate with somebody and that's what's up. I mean, I get why he feels that way, especially if he had a hard time growing up. And he still stutters sometimes. So, you know, I could see him. But the reason... um the one thing about Thea is she never made him feel bad about it. She always made him feel comfortable. She never tried to interpret what he wanted to say. Um, she gave him time to get it out, and he always loved her for that. So he winds up kissing her, um, but she didn't want that. And she tells him, it's time to just call this Dunzo. He, of course, is not ready to go. And I'm like, the guys told him to not go over there he done took his ass over there and now he's made it worse we switch back to gavin and dale um who's one of his teammates um is taking him somewhere um it's in a really nice neighborhood a lot of rich folks stay there and they get to a, uh somewhere and it's uh this guy named mac now him and mac don't really get along um, they go down to the basement. There's a bunch of other guys there and they finally tell him what this is. This is book club. And all these men, um, have experience about to lose their girlfriends or wives or fiancés at one point, And this book club is what helped him. So of course, Gavin's like, this doesn't make sense. How could some romance book help? And they said, well, we don't fully understand women and this helps us understand them. And how they see certain things. And then the guys um, started calling out different things. And Gavin's kind of thinking in his head like, oh my gosh, like, 
did they talk to Tia, Thea or something, you know, because they're hitting stuff on the head. Now, he still is not going to admit about the issue in the bedroom. Um, and the guys are like, if there's issues, they bring it up. And they're like, you know, and if there are issues in the bedroom, that stems from other stuff. And it just comes, it comes there, you know, <laughs> but it doesn't come there. <laughs> well she wasn't coming but anyway i digress um basically they're telling him there are other problems and you need to basically identify those and fix them um this i think is super neat um he was being really iffy about it um thinking like you know i don't know if i could really be a part of this or whatever but the fact that these guys are saying listen we've had some rough patches in our relationships and this is what helped us it's like dude you're like you need the help right because you're doing it on your own you're failing so it's like i don't know what you're being so opposed to the help that these guys are willing to give you you know it's like you need to jump on it <laughs> We then get a snippet of the 18th century novel, romance novel, Courting the Countess. And it's basically a man who's married. There's a conflict. The guy's a lord. Um, he was marrying her because he was in love with her. She, He thought she was marrying him for a title. But that's not why she was doing it. But when he found out that that's not what was happening... Um, you know, she was so offended. She was so hurt. He's in love with her, and he wants to prove to her that, you know, she's the one that he really wants to be with and that he knows, you know, she's just not marrying him to up her place in society. And um, she's just kind of like same thing it's you know very parallel to what our boy gavin is going through to where she's like there's no point you know like you don't trust me you you know your first response to me was one of distrust and you know she's kind of unmovable with that so he comes up with a offer which is basically um, you don't have to give me an air. Like, I'll just let you go. I'll buy you a countryside estate. You can just live there and I'll let you be. And so she's like, so you're going to like, you know, deny me having children. And he's like, well, if you want a child, I'll give you one in the coldest manner that you want. And then if you want to go to the countryside again, I'll let you go. And I'll get your horses because she loves horses and things like that. He's like, and I'll get you whatever you need and I'll let you be. He was like, but what he wants to do, of course, is court her and show her all over again how he feels about her and that he wants her. We switch back to Thea and um, her and Liv are having drinks. We get a little uh, backdrop about Liv. Liv works at a restaurant. She has a tyrant boss. Her dream is to own her own restaurant. Um, but that just hasn't, you know, manifested for her just yet. <laughs> um, she likes having Thea to herself. Um, also she, of course, is very much telling Thea, this is the right thing to do. You know, you're making the right decision. We also find out that their father is getting married again. So this is like his, like, I don't know, fourth or fifth marriage. And the woman is 32. So she's just like six years older than Thea. And it's laughable to her at this point, how he keeps getting married and, he they know the women are doing it because he has lots of money um but his track record is nothing but infidelity so they haven't talked to their mother in a few months um both of them for different reasons uh Liv says that the mother called her and left a message but she didn't return it um we find out that 
on Thea's wedding day, her mother told her um, that basically he's going to break your heart. It's bound to happen. And then you're going to have to come back to me and tell me that I was right. And I'm like, well, damn, bitch. Talk about fucking bitter. Damn, that's a hell of a thing to have as a parent. That's fucked up. Um, so then we find out that she, the reason the whole faking it came out was because initially when they first got together, everything was really, you know, high passion, right? It was great. And then... What happened was on this night, he had, it was like a grand slam win. They won and he was so incredibly hot for her. When they came home, they were just grabbing at each other. They were so excited, so wound up and she wound up having an orgasm. And he was like, what was that? And she says, well, what do you mean? What is it? And he knew that she had never been that way before. He had never experienced her body shaking um, ever like that. So he was just kind of like, what the hell, you know? And he demanded to know how long she had been faking it. And she says, well, since we were married. And he was like three fucking years. And when she said, yeah, it took him out. And that's when he left. He went to the guest room and never came back. And then when she, you know, told him to leave, he didn't give her any resistance. He left. Now, I will say this, okay? On his part, I do understand you're hurt. You found out, you know, for three, three years, <laughs> you ain't been satisfying your woman, okay? And that's, you know, that's hard. And your ego is you know damaged but he of course did not handle it the right way and shutting down not talking to her and disregarding her like nah buddy you can't do that at the same time on her part i get why she didn't say anything because she's not trying to hurt his feelings so she doesn't say anything um until she's forced in a corner to say it then the truth comes out this is why i always tell people do not ask fucking questions you know you don't want the goddamn answer to <laughs> you know you didn't want him to really leave don't put that out there like don't test people to see if they'll do it now if she said it and she meant it cool stand by that shit you know but it don't be like oh i didn't mean it no then you shouldn't say shit like that and same with him he he's a fucking piss poor communicator she's not the best at it either but he's awful because his resolution is just to shut down how the fuck is anything supposed to be fixed if you just fucking shut down and you don't talk to the woman then you should be shocked when she tell you to get the fuck out you know because who wants to live a life like that that's that's awful to have someone in the house and they don't want to talk to you and they don't want to be that's that's that just seems really awful so on both parts they are it's it's on both parts but he sh he just should have read but then again i don't know how to tell someone to react to hearing that right that's a hard fucking truth <laughs> to have to hear if you've been thinking you've been satisfying somebody like the sex is good for you and then you find out it ain't doing it for them that's got ew, that's gotta hurt but you still have to find a better way to react i'm not gonna give him a pass on that because he just reacted too horribly we switch back to gavin it's early in the morning there's a knock on the door it's uh, mac his name is i think bryden or brayden mac but I just like Mac. That's pretty much what they call him. And I like that too. Um, so he brings him some latte thing. It has sprinkles. It's some pumpkin spice. Some type of thing. But it's absolutely divine. Um, and he loved it. And then Dale of course was like. Did you get me one? Because he loves these things too. But he apparently isn't man enough to go and purchase it. Wow. So then. Um, 
tonight they have an event for one for the for the kids they're in preschool and they have a musical and so they're like okay we need to get you ready and he of course again still won't tell them the true reason of what you know initially popped off everything they did ask him you know did you read any of the book and he was like um, what does that have to do with anything? And they're like, if you're not going to take this serious, then like maybe, you know, we shouldn't have invited you to book club. You know, we're trying to really help you win your wife back, but you have got to do the work. And um, so they were trying to help him with like flirting. That was funny to read these guys trying to teach this grown man how to flirt. So then he told him about the fact that she asked if he would basically pay off the house so that the girls um, would at least be able to remain in the home that they've grown up in and not have any, you know, it's going to be a change, right? But they don't have to, like, move. Um, and they're like, okay, so you're just going to give her a are you telling us you're like caving? Like you're going to give her the divorce? And um, he doesn't plan on doing that. Um, but it does appear like it ain't no hope. <laughs> so we switched to Thea. She's getting ready to go to the little recital. Um, the musical thingamajiggy. And she helped with the face painting and stuff like that. Our boy Gavin comes up. We switch back to him. He's dressed in this nice V-neck. I love a man in a V-neck. It is so sexy. But anyway, I digress. Um, she, of course, is beside herself because he's looking really good. Um, he saved them some seats. He winks at her. She just kind of looks at him like, what are you doing? Because she's like, you don't, you don't wink at me, you know? And he's just doing all the stuff that... If he did do it, it's been so long, she doesn't even remember. And she's thinking, like, did you get in an accident? Is something's wrong with you? Like, what is with this behavior? <laughs> and that alone says a lot. Because that means you're not having a playful, a, a, an enjoyable relationship with one another. You're not even doing that. Because the fact that you wink at your wife and she looks at you like, what are you doing? It's like... <laughs> I'm like, flirty should never end. <laughs> so while they are waiting for the girls, it's after the event. Um, the principal comes by and tells Thea, you know, I have that letter for you, X, Y, and Z. And um, he, of course, is like, what letter? And, and um, when the principal walks away, he says that. And she says, I'm going back to Vanderbilt. I'm going to finish my degree. And he's like, what? And he said something along about the lines of um, something like talking about it. But she's like, I don't need to discuss that with you. You know, it shouldn't be a problem that I want to go and do this. And he's like, no, 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 I didn't mean it like that. He's like, I think it'll be, you know, good. But at that point, the damage had been done. She was pissed. The girls run up. They're hungry. Thea was like, I'll make y'all, you know, some macaroni and cheese. And then he blurted out, well, I'm hungry too. You guys want to go to Stella's? So Stella's is a, a diner that they used to go to a lot with the girls. And, of course, the girls were like, yeah, we want to go to Stella's. So Ava wants to ride with her mom. And Amelia wants to ride with her dad. So right off the bat, that makes him feel some type of way because there's a division already, already with the kids. Um... One of them may not fully know what's going on, you know, but one of them knows there's something, you know, fishy <laughs> happening, you know. Amelia tells Gavin, you know, her dad, she's like, mommy cries a lot and Ava sleeps in her bed every night. That, of course, breaks his heart. Um, but this is where, again, they're trying, these guys are giving you trying to give you a, a some type of a solution to help that this doesn't fully break your family because this is clearly happening and it's almost like you don't want to accept it but this is happening you know and Thea doesn't seem to be being you know moved to anything she's like resolved to we're going to get a divorce I want to be able to keep the house I'm going back to school like she's made a plan for herself and for the kids 
they go to the diner um the waitress comes up of course she's like you know i haven't seen you all in a long time thea goes on automatic and goes oh you know we just been so busy with the girls in preschool their dance classes all their after school activities so then the owner stella comes out she brings up about going to their grandparents and of course the girls are like yay we want to go see grandma and then um they're like you know we're not going to see them and so amelia starts freaking out and is like why can't we go see granny i want to see granny ava joins in she's screaming the same thing why can't we go and then amelia yells out is it because daddy's never home and then both the kids just keep crying and then Ava yells out, she hates baseball because baseball is what takes daddy away and makes mommy and daddy fight. So Ava had woke up that night that they had that conversation, that argument. So she heard him fucking and then she heard the argument. So to her, baseball is the problem. So she wants daddy to quit baseball. So finally they're able to calm him down because Thea agreed to let him come and read a good night story to them. Because Amelia was like demanding that <laughs> for her to calm down. And so they get back home. He takes the dog out. He feels like a stranger in his home. He hates that feeling. Um, he uh, takes the kids. I think he took, he put Amelia to bed. Um, eventually both of them are asleep. And then him and uh, Thea have a conversation. He, of course, is on this, I want another chance. She, of course, is like, there's no point. So he's trying to convince her. And he's saying, I love you, but that's not enough anymore. She said some comments, you know, um, to him pretty much like, for again, for what, you know? And he keeps saying, give me a chance to love you um show you and she said all right let's have some stipulations though he wanted three months which would have given him until spring camp so if this didn't work out he at least would have something else to focus on but she said no no a month that's it you get a month you stay in the guest room um he was like, how, am, how are we supposed to fix things if I'm in the you know guest room? She says, that's not, that stipulation is not changing. Um, Liv is going to stay there because she's like, I still need her help. So Liv is going to move to the basement. And um, he, of course, is like, good grief, you know, Lord Fancy Pants, because that's what he calls the Lord, the main character, <laughs> Benedict in the book. He better have a, a a way for me to win this. So we switch we switch back to uh passage of the book, and this is where uh, Lord Benedict is trying to uh woo her with a lot of gifts. Nothing's work. Um he's decided he's gonna try and lay everything on the line. So he gets her a gift. It's a fountain pen tells her how to use it and she of course is like why would you get me something like this and he says well I thought it would make it easier for you because you like to write your sister a lot um so she thanks him and he gives her a proposal um which is like with him letting with her letting him court her like this will help your sister right because if people think this is a sham marriage that's not going to help your sister. But if it's like, oh, these two seem to be really together, you know, it might help your sister's prospects. And, you know, he's like, you know, if you don't want me, he, you know, he'd already set out the stipulations of what it would be, you know. And it start, it's not fully chipping away at her because she's got a massive wall up, old girl. Is there, I think her name was Isabella. I think Isabel, I think I can't remember, but he wants to be able to take her places and, you know, really give her the experience of him trying to woo her. So we switch back to Thea. She got up the next morning, talked to Liv. Liv, of course, is upset about the deal. Um, she was like, 
she accused Thea of being just like her mom. And Thea said, don't you dare say that to me. I am nothing like her. She's like, I am doing this for my children and myself. Besides, I have everyone's voice in my head telling me what to do and I need to find my own voice. Then Liv becomes apologetic and was like, I just don't want you to lose yourself again. And Thea was like, I'm not going to, you know, I'm just giving him the opportunity to get what I want and then I'm done. We then switched to, and that pissed me off with, again, it was fucked up how Gavin was to her. That was very fucked up. But you are acting as if this man was hardcore cheating or beating or doing just awful things to your sister that she needs to be completely done with him. And then to compare her to your to the mother, which we get a little bit more, you know, we find out with that mother, she was awful to them. Um, she basically based her feelings of, uh, with them on how the father treated her. So when the father didn't want her anymore, she didn't give a fuck about the kids. The kids had to go and live, her and live, had to go live. Haha, that's funny. Had to go live with the grandma for, for, I think a couple of years because neither one of them would take them. So how dare you compare her to such an awful individual because you're afraid you're going to get left out in the cold. That's what the fuck it's about. Whether she admits it or not, that's what the fuck it's about. We switch back to Gavin and he's meeting up with the book club at a diner. He tells them about the conditions that have been set. Um, tells them about um, her dad and pretty much how he doesn't, he doesn't know fully a lot about the situation from her childhood right and that's that's a big deal um he knows there's contention but he doesn't fully know and then when he's kind of telling them a little bit about him they're just kind of like okay so he you need to you need to read more in the book is what they tell him because she's telling you like basically She's lost herself and she needs to try and find herself again. And you left was the dumbest thing you could have ever done. <laughs> like, oh my gosh, you, you really were, that was really stupid on your part. So then we switch back to Thea. She picks the girls up from school. She tells them she's got a surprise for them when they get there. They're guessing all this type of stuff. They get there, they see Gavin's truck, they're like, Daddy. So Amelia's happy, Ava's a little skeptical. But then um, she winds up coming around and she's happy too. Um, he tells them that, you know, since they're not going to their parents this year, that, you know, he, you know, they can, they'll go over to Dale's house like they did last year. So Thea's upset because she didn't want to go around the wags. She had no desire to do it. Um, she has like maybe one of them that um named nessa who is dale's wife that she likes but the rest of them are fake and phony and she doesn't like them you know so um this is where i'm like either he's not very perceptive in general or he doesn't even try to be like because how the fuck does he not know the contention that has been going on with her and the women and wags like how the fuck you don't know that at the same time is he just not around so he doesn't see this shit or and if that's the case we can't blame him for anything because he wasn't there so then why the fuck you didn't open your mouth and say stuff so again both of them have an issue when it comes to communication they both suck ass they really do <laughs> They go inside. She's upset. She's putting away the stuff that she bought for the Thanksgiving dinner away. Um, and he brings up terms again. And he says, now it's time to tell you mine. And she's like, what do you mean? And so he wants to go on a date each, each week. He wants a date night, just the two of them. Um, this way she can't avoid him. Because he already knew that's what she was going to try and do is avoid him as much as possible so then she's saying oh it's not working <laughs> so 
he says and you have to go with me to the christmas to the legends christmas ball she of course is like i don't think so but those are his conditions and he tells her where if you don't want to agree to that then we'll get the girls right now we'll tell them we're getting divorced and we'll let the lawyers figure out who's going to get the house that got her attention she's like you're not playing fair but she ain't playing fair either you know what i mean like you're not really trying to give him an opportunity so if he's going to use that leverage of okay well then let's call your bluff then it shouldn't be a problem because if this is what you really want then let's go for it but you want him to you want this to be a peaceful divorce but the man doesn't want a divorce and again y'all haven't even gone to any type of fucking therapy like you just first of all the first fucking couple days i'll give you a couple days that you walk your monkey behind around me and don't fucking talk to me we we, we need to go sit down and talk to somebody because if you ain't gonna talk to me you need to talk to somebody else you know but to let it go on it's like you're not even trying to get a resolution well for her the resolution was <laughs> we just get a divorce So then his other condition is that every night he gets to kiss her goodnight. And so she, of course, is kind of like they wind up doing a small kiss. He pushed, she pushed him away. Um, and then the next morning she wakes up. He's in the shower. He comes out total sex god you know he's got the all the abs showing he's got the towel around his waist he's got you know the um towel around his neck just looking delicious and she of course is like this is not right like this is not fair so she's like all right screw it you want to play this game i'm gonna play it too so she takes all her clothes off And she goes and gets in the shower and she's lathering up and he's watching and his mouth is completely open. And um, he says, you know, I don't think this is as much, this isn't torture for me, you know. And then she made the comment about like how she knows how to get herself off and that hurt him. But she didn't say it to hurt him. She was trying to be like funny or whatever with the moment. And she didn't realize like, oh shoot, like, yeah probably should have said that (laughs) he walks away and she felt so horrible she's like that you know didn't feel like a victory at all because before she was just like oh this is war right when he came out looking all sexy she was like oh this is war so then he was sitting on the bed and he's like is that really what you have to do and she's like everyone masturbates he says no i'm not saying that He's saying, after we were together, did you have to go and masturbate? And she said, sometimes. And she was like, I'm sure you did it too. And he's like, yeah, when I was on the road and I couldn't be near you. So I would fantasize about getting back to you until I had the real thing. So she felt crushed. Um, He felt crushed. Um, And then she said to him, you know, why would you ask me a question and then get mad at me for telling the truth? He says, I'm not mad at you for telling me the truth. He said, but I can't help it if it still hurts. And so he was going to apologize. And she was just like, just get out. They go downstairs. Liv has the kids in the basements. They're doing in the basement. They're doing yoga. Um, He apologizes to Thea. And um, she's pretty much like, whatever. She's still pissed. Um, She takes the pies to the car. He gets a phone call from his mother. No, it was his brother, Sebastian, because Sebastian wound up having to go to the parents' house since they didn't go. Um, His mom begged him to come. So he called, put his mom on the phone. They talked, and the mom's like, you know, um, I've been calling Thea, but I'm not getting anything. It's going to her voicemail. I sent her an email, you know, to see what the kids want for Christmas, um, all this type of stuff. So we find out the parents love her. Um, He hasn't said anything to his parents about it. Uh, he of course views his parents that they have a perfect marriage he doesn't want to ruin you know the fact that he's fucked up you know and again no one has a perfect marriage they just have a, a great way of keeping shit from your face or you're just not that goddamn perceptive 
and I'm starting to lean towards the other one. He, I don't think he just, I just don't think he's perceptive. Um, Tia comes back in and he gives her the phone. It's the mom. They talk or whatever. When she hangs up, she tells him, you need to tell her, you know, and, um, he's thinking, I don't need to tell her nothing, you know, until Christmas, you know, until the decision's finally made. And Liv, before I forgot to mention, she um, was, you know, helping with the girls. And Gavin thanked her and she was like, I didn't do it for you, asshole. And he was like, that's fine. I'm just thankful anyways. And she told him, if you hurt her again, I'm going to poison your protein powder. (laughs) They get to the house. Uh, Nessa is Dale's wife. She comes to the door. That again, that's the only person she likes. Um, Dale winds up running out back because Dale bought a turkey fryer, and they're like, "Oh Lord, let's you know we got to go help." A few minutes later, Matt comes, and he's you know nice, sexy, fine, sexy looking man, and he flirts with everyone's wife. So he of course winds up saying to Thea how beautiful she is and all this type of stuff. He kisses her hand. And Gavin sees it, and he looks pissed. And what really gets him is she was kind of mystified by Mr. Mac. And when she looked outside and saw Gavin's face, it was just pure rage. (laughs) So then we switch back to Gavin, and as soon as Mac came out there, he punches the shit out of Mac. (laughs) And, um... He's like, what'd you do that for? And so then, you know, uh, Thea runs out there. And Nessa and Thea asks, you know, Mac if he was okay. And he's like, what are you asking him how he is? And she's like, because he's the one that got assaulted. So then she leaves from there. And they go inside and have a little conversation. He's apologizing, but she's pissed at him. And she's like, you know, have a little faith in me. Like, damn, you think just because, you know, whatever guy, you know, looks at me or or does anything i'm just gonna go and you know lay with him like what the fuck you know and so he tries to calm down uh she leaves goes off and then he goes downstairs with the guys and um, mac eventually apologizes to him um he's like you know i didn't i'm sorry i like he wasn't his intention really wasn't to try and stir up anything but he really does just flirt with everyone's wife (laughs) that's just what he does (laughs) right or wrong that's just who he is i'm like oh my gosh so then while they're down there and they're talking he kind of says um he has been reading more our our good old boy gavin and he says he hears like that lord guy in his head a lot and they're like listen to unless he tells you to kill someone then don't but everything else he's telling you you're supposed to do um and I like that. It's, they're trying to help you and they're telling you, listen, you're connecting to the material. That's why you're hearing it in your head because you're connecting to it. Um, so everything is going pretty well at the get together. Nessa and Thea are in the kitchen getting everything ready. More people have come. But now the queen bitch has arrived. Her name is Rachel. And she's married to one of the players named Jake. And she is a tall, tall bitch. Um, she's one of those people where like being the wife of a player, that's life, right? And that's all that matters. And so she has never liked Thea. But it was more so Thea thinks because her and Gavin got together really quickly. And she didn't have to put in the work like let's say the other women did. You know with them being in the minors and all that stuff. So there's a little. That's jealousy right. You had to work. I had let me say it correctly. I had to work harder than you. And yet we're in the same space. That, that's what that is. So she doesn't like Rachel. Rachel doesn't like her. Um, Rachel is a con- She's just so condescending. So passive aggressive. She fits all of those <laughs> titles. Um, apparently the women had some type of a meeting she wasn't invited thea was and she was like oh well figure you know with everything going on with you and gavin you know i didn't know if you wanted to go so then they get to the table and 
they're talking about, you know, her going back to school and stuff like that. And um, Rachel, of course, was like, oh, wow. Well, you know, some of us, you know, are are fine with giving up careers. She apparently went to Ole Miss. Um, she wanted to become a lawyer. But she's like, she gave that up for her family. And she's like, you know, sometimes people do that for their husbands. And Gavin's grabbing Thea's leg, trying to get her not to say anything. But it's like, this is a clear indication of the shittiness that this woman has been doing. So if she's doing this in front of your face and you grabbing Thea's leg, like she don't need to respond. Like, no, nah, this woman's coming for her. And you ain't trying to defend her because you don't want to ruffle feathers with your plate, with your, your teammates. But then you want her to sit here and take this shit? No. No. He pissed me off with his reaction. Um, But Thea, she didn't care. You know, she went off. She said, listen, she's like, my dreams are just as important as his. You know? And um, she said a few more things to her. And then she winds up walking from the table. And then after her, and it's like, you know, why would you do that? And she unleashed on him. And she says, these for years. And he's like, why didn't you tell me? And she said, no, the question is, why didn't you notice? And I agree with that. Look at what we just saw. And your first response to her was, why did you react that way? So this lets me leads me to believe that you have seen shit, but you decided not to look at it. You decided to play a bit about it. So I was glad she got in his ass. They leave and wind up going home because both because the kids start feeling sick. Um, both of them wind up throwing up, find out, goddamn Mac told them they could eat as much pumpkin pie as they wanted and they had like three slices. <laughs> so uh, after they cleaned up the kids and everything, um, he was, you know, she's still mad with him. And again, I understand why she is. Because you know what? You didn't stick up for you. He was shit to me. Pure shit. You know, I feel like if some comes, you know, if I'm standing there and, and I'm there, right? And I see someone saying something to my individual and I don't see them respond. I'm not going to let you just sit there and do that to them. Like, First of all, we both going get, to get in your ass. You know, we both are going to annihilate you with words. <laughs> that's how, to me, that's teamwork, okay? And teamwork makes the dream work. And that's how I feel that should have been. It would have been, fuck Rachel, fuck Jake, fuck all y'all. We are not doing this. <laughs> You're not going to talk to nobody. That's just, that's not okay. So she's mad, and I'm not even mad at her for it. I'm like good because he was dead so he winds up leaving to go for a run and she winds she texts him you know are you gone and he's like no i just went for a run i'll be back she's like well don't lock the door because liz is going to be coming in late and um he tries to open it with a key it wakes up um butter which is the name of their dog and so he's like okay no problem so then he comes back, he takes a shower, he knocks on her door, she eventually says come in, they have a little semi-sweet moment. Um, he knew he couldn't do the whole grab kissy thing, so he just gave her a light peck on the, you know, uh, kiss on the, I think it was like on the cheek, or maybe on the lips, I don't know. But it was just a light peck. And um, he said to her, do you need me to tuck you in? And she just kind of looked at him, and she tried not to smile, but he could see the cracks of a smile um, on her face. But he didn't push it. He just left. And also, why he was at, I forgot this, when he where he ran to was to the baseball field. So while he was sitting on the bench, he called his dad, and he told his dad what had been going on. And his dad was like, why didn't you tell me sooner? And he told him, you know, the whole bullshit about, you know, him and his mom having a perfect marriage. And he was like, I was ashamed. He was like, me and your mom have been together for 30 years and you think we don't argue he said damn we were pretty good you know we must have kept that from you real well come to find out they fight all the time they used to it got bad to a point where the mom was like the only reason she was staying with him is because she couldn't afford to take care of the boys on her own this shocked the shit out of him but again this is why you know 
I don't think it's, I'm not saying you need to like fight in front of your kids, but you don't need to act like this is per, like, okay, this is the marriage you want. Cause that's not real. And then when people get into problems, they're thinking, oh, this is the type of marriage that I'm supposed to have in order for it to be successful. And then they get fucked up with problems that can be solved. But they don't think they can. They probably think, oh, this is probably the wrong person for me. Not realizing, the people be going through shit. It's not for them. But you also don't need to present a perfect front. You need to present your real people. You know, you got issues. You got problems. You know, that's just a part of life. Not everything needs to be on display. I don't agree. I don't believe that. But I do believe you don't need to try and give people and give kids perfection about a relationship. That's not real. Like, if you want to do that when they're little jitty bugs, but when they get a certain age, you know, try and get, you know, they need to see realism. That fake crap, he genuinely thought his parents had a perfect marriage. He literally thought that. Like, there was no, oh, no, my parents, you know, they fight sometimes. No, this dude thought process was my parents never fight. They're perfect. It's not healthy. <laughs> Next morning, he helps with the pancakes. Uh, then Thea came in, and so did Liv. Um, she works a lot. Liv didn't get in until like 4 o'clock in the morning. So then Gavin was like, he wanted to take the girls to do some Christmas shopping. And um, Liv was like, you know what, let's have a spa day, you know, her and her sister. And she's like, you know what, yeah, let's do that. Um, she made a comment Liv did um something like I guess she saw her look at him a certain way it was like well what's change you know she tried to make him sound like he was just like their father but he's nothing like their dad you know like he actually loves his kids he actually is around them he's he's a participant he's a participating parent and their father was never that way and this is another reason why I do not like Liv um, <laughs> because she's projecting. I don't like that. That's trash. Liv says she's disappointed in Gavin because she thought of them as the perfect couple. And this is, again, people putting perfection on other people. And then when they don't live up to it, all of a sudden they are trash. You know, it's like it is what it is. So she's all like, oh, so he's blackmailing you, you know, because she was telling her about what was going on and um she's like no that's not what it is or even if it is it's not like it matters he's going to do what he can um she's saying you know he just wants to win that's all this is about that's a hell of a statement to say to somebody and that's awful so then Later that night, they come home, take a shower. And when she comes out of the shower, he's sitting on the bed with a present. He's like, I got a gift for you. It's a book that they have a lot. It's a lot of sentimental hitch, uh, value with them. Um, she was reading this book uh, when they met. And so when she got sick, which turned out to be morning sickness, um, they he would read it to her every night. And then, of course, once they found out it was, you know, she was pregnant, they stopped reading it. But he said, you know, he was hoping that each night, you know, after he kissed her, that they could, um, he could read to her. And so she says, okay, we can pick up where we left off. And he's like, no, nah, I think we need to start over. <laughs> so the next day he goes, he lies. He says he's going to a training session but really, he's going to meet up with the book club guys um, at the diner. So on the calendar, he put his actual training days up and everything. And then where there was an opening the next night, he put in date night. Bold letters on the calendar. So when she came down, he said, I put some stuff on the calendar. So when she saw it, she looked a little crazed. And he's like, is that okay? And she's like, well, I have to see if Liv can watch them. He's like, well, if she can't, we'll get a babysitter. So she takes the kids to school. He goes to the diner, talks to the guys about his prog progress. They're um, trying to find out where he's going to take her for the date. 
he says he's going to take her to this like arts and crafts emporium downtown. She absolutely loves this place. And I think that's smart because he knows art is something that she loves. And this is showing him being supportive of her. But again, this is why simple things, you could have been doing this all along. You know, it, it, <laughs> just say it, you know. <laughs> um, then they're trying to figure out where he's going to go um, for uh, the actual dinner. And he discovers Pinterest. It's a whole thing with that. Um, they start talking about the emotional G spot and all this type of stuff. And um, they tell him, you know, she's going to be skittish. She might even try and pick a fight, you know, to get out of doing tomorrow, going tomorrow. They're like, but you need to make sure that you stay calm, cool and collect. He's like, I can do this. I can do this. Um, they ask him where he is. He says he's about halfway through the book and they're like, good. Cause now the shit's about to get real. It's date night. Um, she's looking great. He's looking great. Liv is like, what are you dressed up for? If you don't care, why are you looking like this? Can't stand her. So anyway, um, they leave and then he winds up blindfolding her, takes her to the Emporium. She is in incredibly happy. They have a great time there. Um, she gives him a little kiss, um, and he's super happy. Um, she sees some guys and she's like, I think there's some guys following us. And he's like, he's looking, but he doesn't see them. They leave from there. They go to a steakhouse um, in a place uh, that's in uh, downtown Nashville. He does get recognized, but he kind of throws up his hand, kind of like a not right now thing. So while they're at dinner, she looks up and she tells him, remember those guys I told you about? He looks back and he sees them. It's freaking Mac. <laughs> So then he goes, you know, I'm going to go talk to these guys. And she's like, no, don't do that, you know. And he's like, it's okay, it's okay. He goes to the bathroom. It's Mac and it's uh, the uh, Russian guy on the team. And they have these, and they don't say his name. They literally call him the Russian guy. So they have these crazy disguises on. And he's like, what the fuck are y'all doing? And they're like, we're trying to help you. Um, they're like, you, real, you did real good with the, you know, Emporium Art Place. Now you need to ask her to dance. She keeps looking at the dance floor. And he's like, I think I'm doing pretty good, you know, by myself. And they're like, listen, when people dance, they open up. It's a lot easier to talk to a shoulder than it is to talk to a face sometimes. Ask her to dance. So eventually security comes in. Um, and the security guy's like, your wife said that she was worried. Her husband came in here to ward off some crazy fans. Um, so the security guy gets him out. Uh... When he gets back to the table, she's like, don't you ever do that again. She's like, that terrified me. She's like, something could have happened to you, you know. So then he asks her to dance, and she's like, we don't do that. He's like, I know. He's like, but I think it's time. So they go out, they dance. Sure enough, she opens up a little more. Um, she tells him um after he asked the question do you regret us not having a wedding she's like we did have a wedding he's like no you don't miss like having your dad walk you down the aisle she said that's something you earn and that wasn't something that he had earned the right to do um she said you know he wasn't there for me and he asked was she going to go to the wedding she says i don't want to watch another woman think that she can change him and she can't and he's just going to leave her um, so then they leave and um, they get back home, awkward silence. He acts as if, um, what did he ask her? He asked her if he could read to her that night and she lets him kiss her and she falls asleep to him reading to her. Super sweet. Next morning, Gav is in the kitchen uh, Liv comes in. She's saying her little snarky remarks as usual. Um, she tells him, don't get too comfortable. You only you don't have that much time left. <laughs> um, then Thea comes down with the girls. She gets an email from Vanderbilt. She has um, got in. Liv grabs her, tells her, you know, how happy she is for her. Um, Gavin says, congratulations. You know, when would you start? She said January 18th. She's super excited. Um, he sends out a text to the book club members like, you know, I need an emergency meeting at my house now. So after Thea dropped off the girls, she's going to go to Vanderbilt to do all the stuff that she could have done online, but she wanted to be on the campus 
um she texts him to let him know she's going to be late to pick up the girls and um he's like that's fine he asks her you know how's it going on campus she doesn't answer that question she just says i'll be back tonight by 10. she goes to meet up with Liv at the restaurant they throw like a little celebration for her um with someone named i think uh, alexis and um, she wants to start displaying local artwork in the restaurant help up and coming artists and she wants thea to you know give some paintings or maybe paint something new thea is excited they toasted to new beginnings and she tastes the champagne but that new beginning thing tastes a little sour to her right now the guys come over they're having their meeting they brought more books for him to read through um and they finally got him um to the base of the problem like he finally fucking admitted and matt apologized because matt had been doing like a bunch of sex jokes but he was just being funny he had no idea you know that this was an issue and he felt awful he was like dude i'm sorry like i didn't mean any harm i promise you know and then the other guys are like you dumb fuck you could have fixed this He's like, you need to be more vulnerable. The other guys, uh, there's Adele, Malcolm, there's different ones. And they're like, you can't ask her to be vulnerable, but you're not doing it, you know? So then they see car lights. They start scrambling. They hide the books. The girls come in. And Liv sees that her Chinese food and her pizza has been eaten. She's pissed. Mac is like, I'm so sorry. She just glares at him. She goes downstairs, the basement she a gag coming out because the russian had pooped again they call him the russian they do not say his name they call him the russian and she just screams i hate men and then gavin's like all right guys y'all gotta go <laughs> he gets all the guys out she goes does her regular routine before bed he knocks on the door um he asked if you know, tonight they could, he could read to her by the fire. She agrees. She goes down there. They start talking. She opens up a little. We find out that he, she, um, told her what the mother had said to her before she got married, which was, you know, you trapped him. Like you're trapping this guy. And she found out that her nickname was shotgun from her father she thought it was because she's a little pistol but it was because literally it was a shotgun wedding she says she has to talk to her mother since spring because she doesn't want to tell her um, about what happened because her mother's just going to tell her that she's right and um this of course made him angry made him want to go and fight the dead <laughs> <laughs> then they have this moment they wind up kissing making out he starts touching on her nipples and then um something moves in the front yard and butter starts barking and this kind of wakes her out of her you know lust induced stupor and um she's like i'm gonna go to bed he's like you don't have to she's like no i need to she's like i need time he tells her you take all the time you need and she says, I'm scared. And he says, so am I. Um, they have different excerpts in the book. It, it's This is a good read. So I would recommend this for anyone to read. And you can read the little excerpts from the book. But I, I'm, I'm not going to go through them. Um, so then Thea's working on a painting at the restaurant. Liv comes in. Alex is there. And Liv is like, oh my gosh, you're horny. She's like, yes, I am. So what? So then Liv gets... Um, is like you know oh my gosh it's working he's getting to you and then she tells her you know I, it's just a game to him he's an athlete all he wants to do is conquer you that's it you don't mean anything else to him um it's all about a win and i was like that's a hell of a fucking thing to say and even her friend alexis was like marriages go through things relationships go through things you shouldn't be so judgy about stuff and Liv went cold and she tells her now you don't have to worry about me anymore you can just um you're just like your mother and you can talk to her now and I'm like that's just fucking wrong you know 
it's not like the woman doesn't love her husband. It's not like, again, her husband was doing like horrible, horrible things to her. He fucked up being cold to her. That was wrong. He fucked up not taking up for her at that damn table on Thanksgiving. That was wrong. But their communication skills are fucked. They need to work on those. Those are not things that you just have to give up the relationship on. And live sitting there and comparing her to her mother, knowing how she feels about her mother, is absolutely deplorable behavior. I cannot stand Liv. She irks my whole nerve. <laughs> I just, I can't stand her. Um, again, they haven't even gone to marriage counseling. They haven't even tried. I mean, if you're being a true friend, um, why is that not something that you would even suggest? You're a sister. Why not even say that? Well, have you guys tried X, Y, and Z? Are you truly through? You know, tell her how the fuck she feels. Don't like just get mad at her because she doesn't feel what you want her to feel. You know, you just want her to yourself and you're pissed about it that things could possibly change. No one says you have to leave your sister's life. You're just being a bitch. Gavin gets home. Um, and old girl is already there. Thea, she is at the point where she needs, she's ready to fuck. So <laughs> they start kissing and rubbing, but he's talking to her like he's coaching her. Like he's like, come on, baby, you can do it. From It's like, uh-uh, turned her all the way off mood was gone fucked it all up so he got mad he left he went to the baseball field um beat the hell out of some balls and the truth kind of was coming out of him as, as he was hitting the balls um you know he knew the marriage wasn't perfect um he knew it wasn't good he knew that she was losing herself and he hadn't been ready to accept the fact that he was going to lose her um he loved because he loved her so much so he goes back. Um, she didn't lock her room, so that was a good thing. He knocked. She opened. And he tells her the story of in high school how he was basically put on a list of the most in need of a pity fuck. A girl had basically laughed at him to his face because of his stuttering. And so he had all these insecurities when it came to measuring up, especially in the sex department, because he was a late bloomer. Um, he didn't uh, lose his virginity until he got into college. So when he met her, he fell so incredibly in love with her. And he was happy she got pregnant because it was like, okay, I can finally, you know, I'll have her, you know. So as the truth start coming out, they start kissing. But he didn't want to fuck her because he didn't want to fuck up the momentum that they had going. And it's like if... He, if they did it and he couldn't make her come, that was going to be fucking tragic. And so, um, she was crying, listening to him in his honesty as well. And so he, she said, well, will you just stay and read to me? And so that's what he did. Next morning they wake up, she's naked, but they, they didn't have sex. They started kissing and she asked him, um, how did you know that I came that time? He said, because you had never done that. He was like, you kept saying my name until you couldn't say it anymore. And then you started shaking. And the way you squeezed me, like, I came so hard. I'd never come that hard before. And so they started rubbing each other again. And then the kids knock on the door. So they had to chill out. She had to put on some clothes. <laughs> they let the kids come in. And the kids sleep with them for a little bit. Later on, they get up, make breakfast. And while they're cleaning up, she gets a text from Liv saying she's going to be staying at Alexis for a few more nights. Normally, Thea would try and rectify it, fix the situation, smooth everything over with Liv. But she's like, nah, Liv is acting like a spoiled fucking child. I'm not doing it. And I was proud of her for that because she didn't need to crawl or grovel because she had done nothing wrong. Um, so tonight's the Christmas gala for the legends. And he told her, he was like, listen, we will find a babysitter. He's like, I don't care if I got to fly my parents in and pay 20 grand to do it. <laughs> He's like, we are going to that hotel room tonight. Um, and she just was, she was just as excited because they both like are ready to bone. 
they didn't have to get the parents to come down <laughs> um Ness and Dill um was were like have the her, have the kids come over to us we got a babysitter um so they're super sweet in the vehicle on the way to the event um they're both nervous about this uh Nessa told her apparently that um Jake left Rachel and apparently he had said he was going to be staying in the hotel for a little bit um so they're giving out award Gavin gets an award um he accepts it says you know you know about you know partners and how great our partners are and how they support us and all this great stuff and it just filled Thea's heart with so much joy it really touched her and then after that, um, he was like, all right, um, I'm ready to go. <laughs> she was like, okay, me too. Just let me go use the restroom. So when she gets around the corner, she hears Rachel and the other woman talking. And Rachel is saying, you know, I can't believe they showed up here kissing in front of everybody. Like, go get a room. And one of the other ladies was like, you know, I thought it was really sweet. Um, other people were kissing too, you know. But she's like, no, but it's them. They're the problem. So then she made a comment about Gavin stuttering and made a comment that, you know, I bet he even stutters in bed. And that's when Thea saw Red Rage and she went off on her and, you know, she let her know if the reason, um, if your, re if your marriage isn't working, it ain't got nothing to do with me. You know, she was mad, Miss Rachel, that they had lost like the, the, I guess the championship game, they had lost it. They won game six, but then when they got to game seven, they lost. And apparently a lot of things were contingent upon him winning that game, her husband, Jake. A lot of um, brand deals and things like that. So she thought that, you know, they won that game. She was going to get out of Nashville. She was going to go to a bigger city. And she was excited about it. So when they lost, it like it killed her dream. So she, of course is blaming everybody else and it's like that ain't got nothing to do with why your husband don't want you <laughs> you're a bad fucking person you know and so before she walked off um because gavin came up and so did some of the other guys and thea said oh yeah and by the way he does stutter um in fucking bed and it's amazing and then she walked off they leave out she thought he was going to be mad at her um and he was not mad at all and i was proud of him because i was like if he was mad at her i would have been like fucking fuck it you know but he was so turned on by her they kissed each other so passionately in the ele elevator they get to the car the hotel's like a mile away he booked a suite because it was a special occasion they have an amazing fuck session he ate her pussy she came like twice i think just from eating his, her um him eating her pussy um and then they fuck pretty much the whole night <laughs> so he's saying stuff to her as he's eating her pussy like you know i could feast on you all night it's the things that he read in the book but i'm like fuck you he trying to he learned you know he's trying to say the things that are going to turn her on you know it's how he feels so it worked she was so incredibly just gone um they fucked throughout the whole night like it was six o'clock in the morning the last time they fucked and then they finally passed out and woke up around noon and um he was like can we go get a christmas tree and she was like yeah we can go have cocoa with the girls watch a movie and all this type of stuff and they're like yeah let's go home and i was like oh it's so sweet so then Liv comes and she hasn't returned any messages anything to thea since their fight so she's coming to get clothes she's still upset she thinks that once gavin's back then there's not going to be any room for her Gavin was like, he didn't want her to leave. You know, Thea didn't want her to leave. The girls didn't want her to leave. And they was like, no, we want you here. And um, she was like, oh, I, is, he's, is he out of the guest room now? And she's like, yeah, and you can go back into the guest room. So then she starts telling um, her again about he just wants to win. And then she says, if you don't believe me, go look in his um chest but she wouldn't say what it was that was in there so she goes and even the kids are like you know daddy's back like 
you know, don't, you, you know, they they don't want her to leave. They love having their aunt there. And she tells those fucking children, you don't need me anymore. And I didn't like that. I was like, you selfish fucking prick. Those are three-year-old girls. Why the fuck would you say that to them? They ain't got shit to do with nothing. And you going to be mean to them? What a bitch. She's a, she's such a fucking selfish bitch. So then, of course, Thea says to Gavin, what's in the chest? She goes, she sees it's full of romance novels. And she's like, oh, my gosh, you read these? We find out she loves them as well. Her e-reader are full, are full of these types of books. And so then when she opens up the count, courting the countess, she sees the highlighted parts and that these are the things that he's been saying to her. And of course she goes, this, this was all a lie. This was a joke for you. And he explained about the book club. He was honest with her. He said, it helped me say the things that I needed to say to you that I couldn't figure out how to say, you know? And then he told her, you know, about how he loved her, but it's like, she can't say she loves him back. He's like, you know what? Maybe you don't love me. He was like, there's nothing else for me to do. I tried. I did everything I could, but everything's not on me. Um, you need to look into your past and deal with your shit as well. And he told her, I'm not your father. Cause she had made a comment, you know, Oh, just leave, just leave. Like they always do. He says, again i'm not your father go deal with your shit he says but i am leaving you and he packed his bag he had already packed okay first of all because he was going to a photo photo shoot in new york um he was supposed to be gone for like two days but he was like he's out like he was done and i'm not mad at him i'm not you want a person to get in touch with their feelings and then when they do it in another way that you don't feel is conventional, you wanted them to just figure it out. What's the difference if he had to go into a therapist and they helped him? What's the fucking difference? So you looking for a way to push him. You're looking for a way to get rid of him too. After he left, uh, Liv comes back and she says, Gavin texted her and said, um, Thea may need you. And then Liv is all apologetic. You know, I'm so sorry. You know, maybe he is different because that was a really decent thing for him to do. So it's like, oh, now he's decent after you've been trying to convince this girl this whole time he's trash. It's like, I can't stand her. And I, she, uh, oh, I still don't like her. She says again, she was afraid that she was going to get left alone again. They both have abandonment issues from their parents, right? Um, but again, no one was trying to leave her. That was in your head. Go lay on somebody's couch and deal with your shit. You know, everybody was telling them, telling her that they wanted her there. Gavin was saying it, Theo was saying it, and the girls. So she just full of shit. That's how I, I look at it. Um, she was like, you know, I saw you going back to be with your man, and then I felt like you weren't going to have space for me. Um, she, We then switched back to Gavin. Um, he crashed at, in uh, Max's basement on his couch. And um, Dale wouldn't let him stay with him, or I think Malcolm, the other guy, they wouldn't let him stay. They were kind of pissed off because he revealed about book club. And it's supposed to be the same thing like fight club. You don't talk about fight club. You don't talk about book club. So <laughs> they were kind of mad about that. Um, Mac had given him a bottle of whiskey, but he didn't drink any of it. And then this little girl comes down. Her name's Lucy. That's Mac's niece. And we find out he's got siblings and a bunch of nieces and nephews. And he's like, damn, I don't know too much about you. He's like yeah well you know kind of that's your fault you don't ask about me you know so he asked him you know what are you gonna do and he says i'm gonna go to new york and then after that i don't know balls in her court Liv has a conversation with thea and thea's like she has to deal with her shit um the crap that they went through with kids as kids i'm sorry um has truly affected her ability to trust um, she thought the worst when it came to Gavin, she was lying to him about not having orgasm and all this stuff. And she decided she wants to go confront her father. She's going to go to the wedding. Um, so then we switched to Gavin. He's on a plane. 
he gets a call from Liv and she tells him, you know, where Thea's going and she's like, she's going to need you. And he, um, he just says backstory. Got it. And she's like, I don't know what that means, but okay. So he's like, okay, I got to get off the plane. It's an emergency. I got to go. So he gets off the plane to go do a grand gesture. So Thea arrives in Atlanta. It's a four hour drive. She gets there, talks with her dad. She almost feels like it wasn't worth it to go. But then her dad had a real conversation with her. She asked him if he regretted her. And he said, no, you were the best thing that ever happened to me. He said, I was never going to be the type of father that took you to games and did all those different things. The only thing I knew how to do was make money, you know. Um, He says, unfortunately, you know, I was too stupid to know better. And she explained to him how both Liv and her are afraid people are going to leave them. They have these abandonment issues. They're just always waiting for someone to leave them because of how both him and her mother treated him. And he did, he felt awful. He said, I regret that every day. He was like, I see you with your beautiful daughters and I know I'm never going to be a part of their life because of my decisions. And that crushes me. Um, he was hoping she would stay for the wedding. Um, but he told her, you know, if she didn't, um, it was okay. He understood. And she decides to stay. And when she sees the woman come out, I forget, I think her name was Jessica. She's younger, right? Remember, she's like 32 or something. But it looks like love between the two of them. Like, that's the first time she's seen her father look like he loves the woman. <laughs> and the woman looks like she loves her too. So she's thinking maybe this time he's going to get it right. Who knows? So she has decided after this she's going to go to New York and she's going to do something she never thought she would ever do which was beg her husband to take her back so gavin and the guys are in atlanta they're rushing down the street trying to get to the church before the vows are done um he wants to do this grand gesture so he gets in there he yells i do it's like what the hell are you doing (laughs) so the um bride's father is like what the hell is going on and then um her father just kind of looked and smiled because he knew what was happening um Thea and Gavin they all went off to the side and um he was there with his um all the book club members too they were all there (laughs) we find out the Russian has a name his name is Vlad I was like thank goodness I was tired of calling him just a Russian (laughs) like say the man name so they had like this little ceremony you know in the back and it was really sweet and so she was like looking at all the guys and she goes oh so this is the bromance book club and they were like that's a pretty good name so we fast forward to christmas eve they're um reading um courting the uh countess and um they have a nice hard fuck and they're just living happily ever after i thought this was so cute um i just really thought it was adorable And it really speaks to how communication (laughs) is just so incredibly important. I mean, Jesus Christ. I mean, they wouldn't have gone through so much stuff if they could have just got gotten past themselves and communicated and were honest with one another. And but I thought it was really sweet. Um, The whole idea of a guy's book club, I just think is awesome anyway. Um, I like when I see book clubs when there's a mixture there's male and female because I like hearing both perspectives so that was really neat um, that whole premise I loved it still don't like Liv I think she's awful (laughs) what did you guys think drop down in the comment section and let me know what you think Um, if you are in the market for a beautiful notebook or journal I do have those available and the links are going to be available down below in the description section if you have any suggestions feel free to drop them down in the comment section and I will definitely look into those um I truly do thank you all for your support make sure you like and subscribe and share thank you so much for tuning in to the always reading book club